A special thank you to our sponsor, Frame Philly, for their hospitality and divine service. Join V, Ryan, and the entire Frame staff at 222 Market Street every Wednesday through Sunday for dinner, weekend brunch, nightlife, and private dinner parties. You can find them online at Frame PHL or by phone at 267-266-9124. A new Sixers arena in the heart of Market East is in the works. You can visit 76place.com to learn more about the project, get updates on progress, and sign the pledge to support the arena proposal. You can also follow on all social media platforms at 76place. Now let's get into the show. What up, what up? We back. The Realist Podcast Server. We're here on location today at the beautiful Frame Philly here at 222 Market Street in the the heart of Old City. I want to give a special thank you to V, to Ryan, um, the owner, for, you know, allowing us to utilize this space today to conduct this conversation, this interview uh, with a very, very, very special set of guests. Uh, One returning, one here for the first time. And uh, today's guest is... A serial entrepreneur, CEO, father, husband, and a leader of industry. His holdings include real estate, alternative investments, aviation, mutual funds, REITs, and now sports franchises. His company, Campus Apartments, represents one of the largest providers of off and on campus housing at over 80 universities nationwide. And his other company, FS Investments, has over $35 billion under management. In a world of sports, he has partners with the Philadelphia 76ers, New Jersey Devils of the NHL, and Crystal Palace FC in soccer. He is joined by our brother, friend to the show, and community leader, Pastor Carl Day, TRP Nation. Let's give it up for Dave Edelman. Uh, this is a huge moment for us today. I want to say thank you, Dave, for uh, for joining us, and Carl for uh, making this happen and putting it together so that uh, you know we could be here today. And we're going to talk Sixers in a minute. We're going to get into everything that's going on with the team. It's an exciting time of the year. Weather starting to break means basketball is coming back, and I think everybody's excited. But I wanted to start by asking, what is the connection between you two and how you met? You want to go first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. <laughs> um, for, for, for one, for one, man, I gotta like start putting some fillers or something in my like bio because like y'all, y'all drop like eighty things for DA, man. I gotta, like, you know, what I mean, like, like dad, and you gotta name each of my kids or something. So, like, I don't own much. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> Next time you come on, we'll do a new in- introduction from yeah, the last yeah, one we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, gotta, I gotta add more to it, but um, you know, uh, just through my my guy Dave Gould uh, from the Sixers, uh, just you know, following along with everything that they had going on. Um, and really getting immersed in the information. Um, I really wanted to go ahead and become a part of this journey with them. Um, so building with them and, you know, me and DA got introduced and, you know, we've met, talked, you know what I'm saying? and had some serious conversations. Um, and it was just like, yo, I'm like, man, you really serious. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you know, just over time, I'm just like, yo, he, he did, he's dead serious about this and just about helping. Then we, you know, accidentally found out that like, you know, me working with, uh, the folks at Jewish Federation Philly, uh, my man Jason Holtzman, um, and Robin Schatz, other people that I've been building with for a few years now, um, he found out about this work that I'm doing with them that was totally separate from the Sixers. Got it. And I'm sure he's thinking about his side, like, man, you really serious. Like, you know, we're really rebuilding, you know, the bridges, um, rebuilding the bridge between the black community, Jewish community. Uh, we've put together a great framework model, um, and I'm super excited about what we're going to do with that. We believe that it's really going to become a great national uh, model um, all across the country that we really want to do it with. So, like, when people think, you know what I mean, like this connection is just like sports related or you know arena related or something like that. It's right. like, nah, man, we really got our hands um, entrenched in some serious work, and we really trying to really create that real change. So, um, you know, that's that's like my my little story of things and my connection and my respect for him. You know, as a man and a father and just everything else that he's about. So, sounds great. I love when Carl talk, man. He's just so good at it. He's great, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. it, just, it just goes. He's sharp. Uh, so, Dave, you have a really dynamic story that um, I'm sure our audience really isn't all too familiar with. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about your background, and then we can get into, you know, all of the happenings that's going around the team. What was life like for you kind of like growing up in the Philly area? I know you're from like right outside the city, and um, you've been biz- business-minded from a very young age. 
Yeah, yeah, look, I always thought, first of all, are we drinking while we're talking? I, 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 just, I just want to make sure. <laughs> I was going to grab mine, but no, I didn't want to. He was say, itching in the yeah, deck. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't, I can't <laughs> just stare at it. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we get a little intro to this right here? Yeah, yeah. so uh, we're sitting here, uh, you know, uh, among the other businesses we didn't mention is I'm in the alcohol business, um, which I got into by accident, but you guys are drinking my vodka. It's called American Harvest. It's uh, organic, made in Idaho. Awesome. It's very uh, good, too. Chasing it, right? Cheers. Yeah. So, like, cheers, guys. And so... Uh, you know, had to bring it, had to get you guys going, right? So, oh, yeah, uh, I see the club soda thing. All right. Yeah, it levels it out. Yeah. You can't go straight vodka at yeah. three, 3 o'clock, you know, man. Yeah, be like, in the house. Let me get a Kool Aid. <laughs> yeah. Club soda. Yeah. It, goes, it goes with any juice. Um, so, I had to bring the boys some vodka here to get this uh, pod going right. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, so I, I've always been into business. Um, you know, grew up in Philly. You know, my story is really simple. Uh, there's a guy named Alan Horwitz who, if you guys watch the Sixers, the guy with the white hair who sits a few seats down, known as the Six Man. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he's 80 years old and you know so passionate about basketball. But uh, he's kind of the guy growing up who's your uncle, who's not really your uncle. But yeah. um, so he founded Campus Apartments. And literally, you know, my story is I was 11 years old. I'm playing basketball with Uncle Alan, and I said, "I bet I can beat you." Most people, Carl heard, heard the story. Most people let the 11 year old kid win, right? Yeah. Not Alan. He is really fucking competitive. ultra competitive. <laughs> and, and he said, "Not only am I going to beat you, but like he he roped me into it too. Like like he's a mastermind." He's like, "Well, how about we bet your football that you don't beat?" Like, and I I, I lost my basketball, my football, yeah. my baseball glove. You got and that you Game Boy, right? All that shit. Okay, and I had to go down to campus. Mario Kart. Yeah, run it. I had to go down to his office every Saturday to stack lumber and sweep sawdust. And Damn. at the end of the day, I'd get one of my things back. Mm. Okay. I'm 11. <laughs> all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. And so uh, literally I did that. And then uh, so I loved like the real estate. He taught me real estate as a kid. Two years later for my bar mitzvah, I had some money. And my parents were like, you're going to give it to your grandfather to pick stocks. I guess my grandfather knew a lot about the stock market. And I was like, no, I want to give it to Uncle Alan and own real estate. Yeah. True story. So literally, I got in the car with him. I, I, he said, well, which building do you want to do it? And he drove me around West Philly where his buildings were. And I said, that one. He's like, well, why that one? I said, because it's the biggest one. I didn't know. I was 13 years old. Yeah. And so literally, I handed him a bag of cash. wasn't that much. And uh, that's how I got into business. And I've been working ever since. Yeah. Uh, you, uh, the relationship, uh, you know, with, with Alan is very pronounced. But then at some point as an adult, you come back. And you basically rise through the ranks at Campus Apartments, um, starting off, you know, pretty much as a leasing agent and then, you know, running all the way up to CEO where you are now and becoming CEO at 25 years old, which is extremely impressive. Walk us through some of the experiences on taking on such a tremendous leap in such a short amount of time. Yeah. And look, at, at that time, we were kind of in what I'd say a nice mom and pop business at that time in Philly. He, he had done really well for himself. And I started looking around. And I said, no one's doing student housing at scale. And because it, real estate people were like, oh, that's kind of like animal house. Kids are going to fuck up the places. We don't want to deal with that stuff, right? And I was like, you know, it seems like opportunity for me if no one else wants to do it and I'm willing to do it. And so I went to him, literally, I was like 25 or 26, and I said, I think this can be a national business. Yeah. He said, that sounds like a lot of headache. I don't really want the <laughs> headache. I kind of like, you know, what we got going on here. Um, but, like, have at it. And so he was like, here are the keys. Like, you know, go do it. You got to figure it out. And honestly, like... Uh, he gave me my start, and like I wouldn't have been able to build what we built without that kind of initial platform. Yeah. Let me ask you this real quick. What college did you go to? Ohio State. Buckeye. I'm a Buckeye. Oh wow. How does a Philly guy end up as a Buckeye? And not, a, and you're not a running back. I'm not a running back. Yeah. Or a no. flanker. No. Yeah. No. no, no. Um, and uh, yeah, definitely not. Uh, you know, the truth was that like kids on the East Coast were going to you know a lot of East Coast schools. I knew one person. I was like, I don't want to go to college where I know people. I want to try something different. Mm-hmm. Um, went out there. Um, True story is, you know, I went to a fraternity party, you know, and I was like, uh, let's just say I had a good time. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, I'm going here. Right. <laughs> like, that was it. <laughs> um, pretty, I'm pretty shallow. Um, and so uh, <laughs> that, that was my experience. And the truth was, people from the Midwest are great. Like, I had a great experience out there. I, I really enjoyed it. It was a great school. Columbus is a great town. We own a building there now. Um, but I, I had a great college experience. You know, big time football. It's great. What did you, what was your degree in? So it was interesting. So I was in, I was political science. I thought I was going to go to law school and business minor. And I wound up applying to law school, got in, deferred it, and then was like, I don't want to be a lawyer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, just, and if you know me and like guys here, I'm looking at DG who knows me, you know, like, you know, I, I have like ADD and OCD. Like I can't study for shit. Like, okay. so like I would, I like, and so I like, 
I don't know. I like the like negotiating part of legal yeah. law, but I, I I wouldn't be a good lawyer. Um, and so uh, you know, came back, you know, worked in the business, and then just went from there. Mm. I've been a Buckeyes fan since Eddie George. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know. I think we all were uh, Buckeyes I, I, fans at various points, depending on yeah. kind of like who goes there. My, my like, college allegiance jumps around. <laughs> I said last year I want to go to one of the games when they play Mi- uh, Michigan. It's yeah. a great oh, game. Yeah. That, that is like the game to go to. Yeah, that's what I want to yeah. do. That DG, one. DG told me he's taking me. To, DA told me yeah. he's taking me. To. Yeah, we got to go. I'm going to run a trip out there. We will, we will get out there. <laughs> yeah, I'm not doing nothing. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm available. Yeah, nah. Well, it's, it's in Michigan, so it's going to be cold. It's, it's, it's always it's cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you can't be a Buckeye. Go. That'd be like us going to a. Eagles fan going to a Dallas game. You don't show up there, you know, or Dallas fans. Come yeah, to yeah. So I, I don't go to Michigan anymore. I've learned my lesson. Um, yeah, Ann Arbor gets crazy. But I'll tell you what's been fun in college football. My daughter goes to Boulder. Oh. Coach Prime. Where? Coach Boulder. Colorado. Colorado. Okay. Yeah. So uh, it's been fun watching Coach Prime. Yeah, apparently, like right now, um, I, I liked one too many Dion videos. My whole feed is yeah. on Instagram Yo, is Dion too. right now. Me too. Everybody's feed is all <laughs> this. I'm sunglasses just to support Prime this Sunday. So I'm like Colorado fan too. That's my second team. Yeah, yeah. So let me ask you this, Dave. How did you scale the business? How do you go from this regional mom and pop business? Um, I know you started with UPenn and got that really, really developed and pronounced and how, how, does, how does this turn into this behemoth that it is now? You know, w- what I learned was real estate's real estate, but what made us special at Campus Apartments was our people and how we treated people. Got it. And so I was like, how do I replicate that kind of, like, family atmosphere or team? You know, I kind of say, like, we're not a family, but we're a team, right? That's probably the best way to destri- describe your work colleagues, right? And um, how do you make sure that team works when you're, you can't coach them every day. Right, right. You coach, you know, there, weren't, there wasn't Zoom back then, right, <laughs> to coach them. You know, you're calling them up and reading a piece of paper, and, you know, that, that, that's it. And so I think for us it was like how do we instill culture? How do we get people to treat people the same way that they're treating – we treat them there? And then, like, hey, how do you build a brand, right? Consistency, quality, things like that were really important to me. Yeah. Uh, you are a serial entrepreneur. We kind of alluded to in the beginning. A bunch of different uh, – investments, holdings, ventures in different industries. What consistencies or inconsistencies do you recognize from industry to industry that's, that has made you so successful? Well, one, I, you know, I, I'm not afraid to fail. And I think a lot of people are. Mm-hmm. So we talked about that a lot. A literally lot. just talked about literally that recently. Just talked about recently. Right? A lot of people won't, you know, they, they get paralyzed by the what if. And I'm like, you know, why not? Yeah. Okay, so there's a big difference. And so for me, like, I'll take the chance. But, you know, for me, what, what do I look at? <laughs> I look at a market segment that says, you know, what's, like, has this been done before? Has it been done well? Can it be done better? I mean, honestly, I'll, I'll laugh, you'll laugh, but, like, why am I in the vodka business when Tito's sells 10 million cases a year? They're the number one U.S.-made vodka. Yeah. The next biggest one sells, you know, maybe 150 to 200,000 cases, like, like right. at such a minimal amount. I was like, you know what? Someone's forgotten about this category. So I'm going to go where other people don't. And so for me, it's all about either A, is there someone in the business that I can count on who's a proven leader? You know, kind of like I, I, you know, I was saying, you know, I bet on the jockey, right? And so like, what are they bringing to the table if I'm backing them or partnering with them that I don't have? It's because it's got to be something different. Got it. Hmm. What core competencies do you possess that you feel like may separate you from other CEOs and executives? Um... One, I'll work harder than anyone. I'm not smarter than everyone, but I'll work harder. Got it. So, like, when you realize that you're not the smartest guy, but you're the hardest working, that, like, you'll, you'll find a way to figure it out. Yeah. So, like, I will just, like, I will outwork until I get to the right answer. How have uh, some, how has that work ethic helped you out in your role with the Sixers? Um, You'd have to ask my man, David Gould, <laughs> over here. who uh, DG yeah, over there, chilling. D- D- DG in a cut. Yeah, so DG, uh, DG, you got to pour a glass, man. Go get we gotta get, let, let, come here and pour a glass. We gotta. My, yo, my man, my man, like, y'all gotta look out for, we, for, for DA's book, man. You know what I'm saying? Not, not only is he, like, super CEO and everything else, man, but he got all the quotables in the world, man. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't worry about the, the what ifs, you know, actions of why not. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm holding on to some of that. You know? I'm Absolutely. available on Sundays, man. Okay, <laughs> hey, I, got, I got a replacement. There Do it is. a guest spot. Yeah, yeah guest preacher. There we go. Let's go, DJ. Pour yourself on you. Come in. Um, and, and so. I lost track. See, see, I told you I have bad ADD. I told you I have bad ADD. Oh, what, what, the, the work ethic with the Sixers. I, look, you know, I'm fortunate to have t- you know, two great partners in Josh Harris and David Blitzer. Um, and, you know, we have a great CEO in Tad Brown. And, you know, all of us have just 
how do we do what's best between for the team, for the city? Right. You know, I say this all the time, and I think everyone agrees. Like, the Sixers are, like, not our team. It's the city's team, right? And how can we just be good stewards of that and do right by the city and our fans and our players, right? And it's not easy to make everyone happy. You know? Absolutely. I, I tell everyone, like, owning a sports team is great when you're playing well. <laughs> okay. Especially in a city like Philadelphia. Right. In Philly, it's not great when things are not going well, right? Yeah. Um, but, like, that, you know what? In every business, your customer should hold you accountable, right? It doesn't matter what the business is, but if you get complacent, that you, you deserve what's coming to you. So, like, I love our fans. I love that they hold us accountable. I love that they have high expectations. And, like, we're all going to work really hard to give them the best product we can. Yeah. Uh, question for both of you. We're operating in an era now where uh, DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion, has come to the forefront in most business conversations. Uh, what are the two of you doing separately and together to ensure that DEI is a firm part of your business and communal efforts? So, for me, man, um, y'all know I don't stop working either. You know what I mean? And, and, and me and DA got a lot in common, um, except money. Like I'm, I'm poor. So, so. <laughs> and, and hair. I'm rich. Yeah, dude, man, you got right. plenty of this, man. <laughs> so, um, you know, that, that goes to show you, man, the stress, man, you take on, man. So, uh, <laughs> but, but, um, but now we, we're, we're a lot of like in the, in the areas of the fact that like how hard he speaks about how he works in his industry, but as well as I do in mine. You know what I mean? And I, you know, I, I say it humbly, but it's not a lot of pastors that work harder than me, like in this country. Um, but you know, diversity, equity, um, is, is huge for me, you know, being in various spaces, whether it's political, um, you know, whether it's corporately, um, and just even on a day to day, um, dealing with, you know, people in our communities. So dealing with that issue of diversity, talking about how do we bridge those gaps between those who are newcomers in our communities? Um, how do they really forge and, you know, found foundational relationships with people who've already been there. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's one of the things that I think the Sixers, uh, shout out to DG, Dave Gold, like, you know, the, you know, his role um, pretty much running that spearhead net. Um, it, it's just been phenomenal seeing an organization, a company, you know, and I don't even want to say an organization, but a company, not just a sports organization, but a company that does industry in Philadelphia having that level of intentionality. And I sit with all kinds of people, all kinds of people I'm talking about. You yeah. know what I mean? I've sat with plenty of CEOs. I sit with po po politicians from the city to state to, you know, the federal level. And for, to see something so robust uh, and intentional and very detailed, I'm like, again, they're not playing. You right. see what I'm saying? Right. And like, so for me, and that's like, I think the difference between me and the, the, the common casual critic, it's like, this is what I do. You know, like, right. and I'm talking about, again, I've been at the White House. I've been everywhere. And we had these conversations. I look at levels of investment and I'm just like, ah, oh, that's some BS. Um, or that ain't, that ain't enough. You know what I'm saying? It's, this is performative. Yeah, this, this is, is performative. this very, is like a, a, a chip as opposed to giving somebody the whole bag. Extremely, extremely. So when, when I see the ignorance that like is constantly spewed, I'm like, I can tell y'all haven't been nowhere and I can tell y'all not really on the ground. So uh, for me, I'm in a unique position to where I can kind of merge the two and see what, see what things are for what they really are. And I'm just like, yo, this is phenomenal. So for me, like as a person that's very involved and invested in that diversity that inclusion and making equitable circumstances and situations for the people I fight for, um, connecting with somebody else that has that same heart, that same passion, you know? Right. And I think the Sixers have done a phenomenal job between having uh, the right person uh, overseeing that department, but also having, you know, one of the bosses who really has a heart for that. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And I, I had personal dealings with both. And I'm just like, the synergy and just everybody being on that same mission and that same heart, it's like, we all on the same page. So yeah. That's, that, that's, that's at least my perspective. Dave, same question. Answer, Carl. Yeah, no, listen, he, I mean, he, uh, you, can li he, you, can, you can listen to him. And, and by the way, one of the things. And then hit the drink. <laughs> yeah. But, but, you know, one, one of the things I really appreciate about Carl and as we've become close is that, like, he'll, you know, like we're friends, but like he'll check me, right? And like he'll hold me accountable, and I, I want to be held accountable. Yeah. And I want I want people to understand that what we're trying to accomplish, you know, isn't for show. Okay. <laughs> and like and, and like we have these real conversations about it. Like you know, here's how I'm thinking. What what do you think about this? How's it going to be perceived? And so you know, for example, like you know, when we came out and said for the new arena that forty percent of the you know, businesses mm -hmm. in the arena will be you know black or brown owned like that like i'm not playing like we we came up with something that you know we we don't want to like just put some bullshit quote out that people get by we want to put real numbers out there we want this, 
the arena to reflect the complexion of our city. Okay. Right. And, and so, like, I'm not looking to get by on the minimum. I'm looking to achieve something that hasn't been achieved in the city before. Okay. And, you know, the view for us is, and, and he's right, you know, Dave Gould and I, we go around the city and say, like, how can we make this arena great for everyone? Okay. We want it great, you know, for, there's a lot of constituents that we got to please here, and I'm sure we're going to talk about it, but yeah. I can't help myself because I'm a salesman. <laughs> um, you know, but one, like, you know, our city is dying, okay? We're the poorest big city in the country. I say it all the time. Which is why we're not we taking any ourselves. money and why this is going to be privately funded. Yeah. Okay? Two, it's going to produce a billion dollars of city taxes, $200 million for the school district, $800 million for the city, and then another $475 million for the state. In taxes. Is that fair. annually? Total, over okay. 30 years. Over thirty years, year? yeah. <laughs> but like you know, Man, for us, you? To be, you know how good it makes me feel. My wife's a teacher, like, and her biggest upset is how poor the city school district, you know, the school district is. And if I know that we're putting two hundred million dollars into the school district over thirty years, I, I feel really good about that. Okay, and I want to entice other businesses to do those things. And so for us, how do we help make this everyone wins? Okay, so the people who own and operate and work in the building, the people who help build it, the 9,000 construction jobs, how do we make sure that that workforce and, and talking to the unions, how, how diverse that workforce can be where, you know, historically the, la the labor unions have not done a great job with that. How can we motivate them and incentivize them to do better? Yeah. Okay. How do we make sure that the adjacent communities, including Chinatown, can win? Okay, so like this isn't like a zero sum game. Okay, like everyone needs to win from this project. And so for me, when we're talking about that, whether it's here, whether you know it's in different, it, it, you know, it, it, we talk about like the, the places where Carl is. Like, how do we make sure the black community benefits? Okay, that yeah. isn't across the street or two blocks away like Chinatown is. Like, these are all points on the board that we want, we need to hit, right? Right. And so like for me, we're driven by doing the right thing. I, I think you're gonna no matter what you're gonna always have detractors. No matter, you're just not going to be able to please everybody. So you got everything you just said, 200 million to the school district, 800 million in city tax. It's like, okay, well, what about the traffic issues? And like you just said, Chinatown getting displayed. Like it's a lot that goes into it. For sure. But I, I definitely want to like say this, and, and I, I speak for me right now, because um, I don't know, DA might know some of them people. I don't. But um, like the, I believe it's Jacksonville. They were talking about like how, they're, they're looking for a, a new, no, OKC, actually, I'm sorry, yep. OKC. They're talking about borrowing money from the city, yep. right, to build the stadium. Yeah. If people don't understand how real this is and how nonsensical we look as a people, because I'm sure, like, Oklahoma City would look at y'all and be like, yo, y'all dumb. Y'all don't want these people to privately Yeah, I mean, this. most yeah. of the time when you see a stadium or an arena get built, it's city-funded. Yeah. But, yes. but, but here's the kicker, though. A lot of that money that they're taking and borrowing would come out of programs that's essential to mm -hmm. a city. Right. So as somebody, yeah, it's not new money that they're creating; yeah, they're, they're not diverting just, it from so, somewhere so, else. So, so you know, is, we found 150 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, under the mattress and, here, and, and that's what makes this so <laughs> historical and just you know different. It's a unicorn because not only is this this bringing money to the city, like again, other readers and whatnot, they end up. And I'm gonna tell you this right now: the truth of the matter is, some of the most essential programming that people don't deem to be necessary, you know, or that pretty, that's where the money comes away from. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. To where our communities mm -hmm. still struggle the most at because that type of money yeah, is kicked out first. So, like again, that's why this thing, like people can't play with this, you know, because again, we're seeing it in real time. Like Absolutely. people will tell you about how much of a disaster this brings to cities. Like, yeah, when these people are borrowing all kinds of money sure. and, they're, and they're killing programs, but this right here is actually kicking out more. So, right. again, people need to, you know, get, get, get in tune with reality and see what's it's, going on. It's interesting because we had this conversation maybe four years ago because me and him travel a lot. We go to a lot of places. And one thing I noticed about going to more modern cities, you know, Philadelphia is an old-ass city. For sure. And when you go to more modern cities, like you go to Memphis, FedEx Forum is across the street from Bill Street. When you go to Phoenix, all their arena, it, everything is there. And for years, we would always say, like, the sports complex is just so out the way. And it's like when you leave there at the end of the night, because we go to Sixers games all the time, you leave and it's just like, this is it. Is it? <laughs> so so, so, so here, here, here's what I say, okay? Number one, like, absolutely, like, having football and baseball there makes sense, mm -hmm. okay? 28 out of 30 NBA teams have a downtown right Exactly. Right. We're going to be number 29. So I say to everyone, like, Philly, like, kind of an old like city. Madison Square Garden is right on 34th Street. Well, like, but, like, I, I say it this way. If I was proposing the first urban arena in Philadelphia, this might, people would say I'm crazy. Right. We're going to be number 29. <laughs> okay? yeah, yeah. Like, 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 we've given everyone a chance to understand what it does in the en environment and the vibrancy that it brings. And so for us, like, for this 
putting it where we're putting it does three things for us. One, obviously, you know, you know the other stadiums all got free land. Mm-hmm. We're paying, you know, we're paying for our land. Yeah. We're, we're helping out a mall that's too big that's struggling. That mm-hmm. gallery's been there for, you know, we are, we're all Philly guys. You know, it's, mm-hmm. you know, too big. I used to work there, there as a kid. Yeah. So you understand. So <laughs> yeah, we're new gonna, gallery is not doing well. It's right? not doing well. So we're going to cut yeah. that down in size and take a third of it and make it, the, you know. Number two, it's on top of the busiest train station in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. And then number three, we're not displacing anyone. Right. Okay. And I, like, I want everyone to hear me. So zero displacement. Zero. We're taking one box and building another box. Well, we will the not people displace. Who, or on or on Market East, but that's a whole nother story. No. Right? You mean the tenants in the mall? No, like the people the, on the street. The, tenant, right? the street right. tenants. Yeah. 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 They're getting displaced. Well, yeah. I'm hoping we can help. You know, yeah. all, all that. You know, that billion dollars of tax revenue yeah. can help create some programs yeah. for that. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I mean, that, that's the hope. But that's interesting, though, that you say that because I the the conception or well, the perception rather is that. Everyone's getting displaced and everyone's getting thrown out. We're not displacing one business or one building in Chinatown. Okay, oh. we are taking the mall, knocking the mall down. We bought the Greyhound bus station. They had already left. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We didn't they're kick them out. They're on market now. Yeah. We, but we didn't kick them out. They had said they're leaving. Yeah. So all we're doing is building on the site of the mall and the Greyhound bus station. That's it. Okay, so you got like a lot of like noise out there about the stuff that's not correct. Right, right, right. And and so I go around and I have my talking points because I want everyone to understand. And I'll say it again for all your listeners because you guys have a huge audience. We are not displacing one business or one resident in Chinatown. That's pretty interesting because the way it's been reported is so different. Like, well, in the news they say you're live from the Chinatown arena. Yeah, Market East (laughs) has never. No one ever said the gallery was in Chinatown. Mm. Not once ever in like fifty years. No one's ever said that. Okay. So what do, what do you think is fueling that misinformation? <laughs> um, you know. Uh, <laughs> CBGR. Uh, uh, Who sent you? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, man. I mean, it, it's, 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 for me, I'm going to tell you, I think it's multi-pronged, but I mean, I still see everybody from like the Wells Fargo Center, like shooting, you know, firing shots from, you know, on the Twitter. And um, it, it's, it's, it, it's, it's a lot of, you know, I'll say this, right? It, it's a lot of different people that I believe is fueling it. Um, one of the things that I truly f- feel is unfair, which is why I say, yo, I got to get my brother on here, um, because I feel like um, the black community at large is very uninformed, not even misinformed. Yeah. It's uninformed. A lot of people, y'all know how it is, and down our neighborhoods, people are like, that's oh, between them and, and downtown. Like, yeah. we ain't got nothing to do with that. I, so, I say it all the time, to, uh, to, to our detriment, unfortunately, black people are usually the last ones to know stuff or to understand stuff. Absolutely. Because of the way that, like, we receive information, it's usually uh, mouth to ear as opposed to, like, taking advantage of all this technology and Man. all of this access that we have. That's too much work. But, but, yeah. but, you know, <laughs> but, but, but it's like, yeah, so for me, I'm looking at all of that, and I'm seeing it like, yo, this is crazy because seeing this entire, you know, game plan rolled out, seeing how intentional, how detailed it is, you know, because y'all know, like, I, I won't even put my name on, on, on anything. You Absolutely. follow what I'm saying? Like, you know, so. It, it, it just, it, it's wild, though, because, like, what, what, what he just said, like, we're not trying to be the first. We're trying to be the 29th. 29. That's it. And now it makes me really think of, like, every arena I've gone to. Where you it's walk like, out of the Mavericks Arena, the W Hotel like, is I, right I, across I the street. I stayed at Epic in Miami. You go like, out Miami Heat Arena or is after. right there. Like, of yeah, course. yeah. Like, like, right now, like, you know, I, I tell everyone that before I became the owner, like, I'd leave with two minutes left because I didn't want to sit in 45 minutes to get out of the parking oh, lot. Sure. Now i got to stay till the end, which is fine. But, like, I'm yeah. stuck in this <laughs> same traffic. Like, mm-hmm. But, like... Where can you, you know, if you want to, like, have an experience with someone before dinner and go out to eat, go to a restaurant, go to a bar, go to tailgate. Like, I tell everyone, like, when I went up to Boston, I hate the Celtics, okay? <laughs> I hate the Celtics. We all do. Um, we and, all and, do. And, but when I went up I there. I think you speak for the room. I'm walking in through the <laughs> arena. I'm like, holy shit, guess what? An arena built on top of a train station, mm-hmm. okay? And guess what? The way they pregame and tailgate is going to the bars and the restaurants and spending dollars and fueling the economy. Yeah. That money. should be us. Okay, yeah. and, and so like our games are over at nine or nine fifteen. It's easy to go out afterwards and go have dinner, go have a drink, Absolutely. go entertain. Like that fuels the economy. That brings back our city. Yeah. You wouldn't think it'd be that much pushback on it. You know, yeah. Like there's a couple of forces at play here. DG's giving me the eye because he doesn't want me. To, <laughs> um, but look, one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I always want to be simple. Yeah, so Carl preaches Sunday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can get the live stream yeah, at culturechangeinchristians.org. Uh, 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 
<laughs> you know, DG is always like, you know, you guys want to run, you, you want to run by your tweets before yeah. they go out, you know. Um, but no, so I, I think, you know, here, here's what I'll say a couple things. And this is actually in a serious note. Like, there have been bad things that happened to Chinatown. And I think they need to be acknowledged and understood because I didn't understand it. My guess is the black community didn't understand it either. But like, when the Vine Street Expressway was built, Okay, in the 1970s, it cut through their neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like literally, like eminent domain, like row homes were go- across the whole thing, cut in half. Yeah, 95 okay. through up a lot. Right, we, so, we so, get it. so you right, so like that happens, right? Then the convention center gets built in the 1980s, 1990s. Eminent domain, people get kicked out. Okay, and then all of a sudden, like the rear of the convention center faces the community, no engagement. Then in 2000, they were going to do the Phillies ballpark downtown. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Same thing would have happened. Mm-hmm. So, like, I understand that they're, they've gone through things. Okay, they built an arena in Washington D.C. They used eminent domain and decimated the Chinatown community there. Okay, but like, this is not that. Mm-hmm. That's why I come back to the facts, which are we're taking a mall that's not doing well, right, and taking one entertainment complex and creating a new entertainment complex. That's it. Yeah. I, yeah. Because I'm not going to front. I was on the side where I kind of thought it was going to knock down certain buildings. Yeah. Salt and pepper chicken was out. Like, just a lot, like, just a lot of no things. Davis. You know? <laughs> what are we going to do at 3 in the morning? D- 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 <laughs> <Like>, yeah. <No> <laughs> right. So it's like knowing now that it's like, oh, yeah, the mall makes total sense. Like, yeah. And no one, like you said, ever said the gallery is in Chinatown. Correct. Mm. Yeah, not once. Uh, let's rewind a little bit. How did you even get involved with uh, Harris Blitzer Sports Entertainment? So, you know, I've known those guys for a long time, okay? Uh, but my best friend's a guy named Michael Rubin. I was about to say, you Rubin, right? Yeah. yeah, so we've been friends, best friends for 25 years. I was going to say, you guys are literally from, like, the same area, right? Same a- a- area. We're the same age. I'm three months older than him, so he likes to say that I'm older than Big him. Big bro. Right. <laughs> um, but, uh, we, so, you know, we've known each other forever. Yeah. And when... By the way, when the Sixers were for sale originally in 2011, we were like, yo, we should go buy them. Mm. Wow. Except for one thing. We didn't have the money. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we didn't buy them. Was, uh, there, uh, was there anything that you know, that you knew in, when, he, when did he come in? Like 16 or no, 15? So, so he actually wound up putting a little bit in little with bit those in. guys. So, so what do you know now about sourcing money and venture capitalism and pooling money that could have got you the team then if you had that information. Yeah, I, I think, look, could I have you know, put a group together? Absolutely. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, but I, I was also building the one of our, the, the credit business we had. He was building Fanatics. Like, okay, It was it. a bad, like, I just couldn't, you know, I was focusing on building my business. Mm-hmm. So I don't look back and regret it. But point is, he had to sell because Fanatics, his company, got into sports betting. Mm-hmm. And you can't be in gamble, of conflict of interest. Yeah. So that's when I bought his piece out. Um, and so, you know, after Josh and David, then I'm the next largest owner. And, awesome. You know, being the Philadelphia guy has been great. Yeah, that's dope. That's dope. Passion aside, speaking strictly from a business standpoint, um, as a serial entrepreneur and investor, what made the Sixers an attractive investment, or is it all passion? Um, that's a great, that's a great <laughs> question. I'm just trying to go. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, listen, like it's your hometown team, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, like I think when I look at deals and I'm looking at stuff, and you're looking at economics, like there's always like the fun factor in any deal. Yeah. So the fun factor to me outweighed, Ooh, like yeah. you know, like like look, the truth about sports is, you know, like I'm never gonna sell this. Okay. Mm. Like so, like. What happens between now and when I die, I don't know if it's going to make money, lose money. But like, yeah. for me, like, hopefully it's worth more you know, someday than it is today. Mm-hmm. Right? And that, that's the bet I'm making. So, so you're like the Jerry Jones of the NBA. Right, like, yeah. like Jerry Jones, <laughs> yeah. he ain't selling the Cowboys. Yeah, and look, I think you see that with most of the Kraft family owns yeah. the Patriots yeah. and others. Like, like Jerry, you can get $12 billion. Yeah. I mean, that's cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. No, What's the valuation? Yeah. I ain't never going to get it. Yeah. No yeah. Yeah. What's the valuation? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. That's definitely dope. I will say this, though, um, you know, to your question earlier, I feel like what's also important, man, and, and you know, just to y'all listeners as well, because as DA said, man, y'all got a y'all got a big following, man. And it's very important that other communities are heard. This is a project that benefits so many people Absolutely. citywide. You know what I mean? And it's like we're really not hearing from all communities in Philadelphia. No. You know what I mean? So, like, mm-hmm. that's why, like, my mission throughout this, um, it's not an us versus anybody and anything, anything like that, but, like, Man, the people that I'm serving, the brothers that I'm saving, spending the time in them streets and them corners and doing the things that I do that really damn near put my life on the line. And my wife is texting me like, yo, why are you going down there? And it's like, like y'all know, well, you know me, Chad. So like, yeah, last I, I don't worry about somebody doing something yeah, to me. Yeah, I same. know you know you. But, but yeah, you know me, know me. But, but it's like, you know, so for me, it would behoove me uh, to 
Get these brothers Ooh. off. Yeah, but who <laughs> me to get them off the streets? Yeah. Try to force them or tell them they need to clean their lives up and turn down historic opportunities to actually transform and transition them yeah. into things that really can help them. You mm-hmm. follow what I'm saying? Like, yo, we talking about 40% of food and vending going to, you know, black and brown entrepreneurs yeah. inside of the arena. You follow what I'm saying? And so, so it's like, for any detractors or anybody that's really trying to stir up anything, you know, what various communities should be doing, you know, is like saying, well, what else would you have to replace all of this equity, all of this support, thousands of jobs, yeah. union skill, union labor jobs. Like, what else would you have in place if not this? Yeah. What else? You see what I'm saying? And if you don't have an alternative, like, you should not have an opinion. Yeah. I, like, like I, and that's how I feel. I'm not speaking for me. I ain't speaking for the <laughs> I'm speaking for me. I yeah. talk six, I'm talking about me. I've literally so, posed that question on the show. When the, when the initial announcement was made and there was, like, a, you know, press conference and we saw you looking very dapper at the press conference and hey, talking and everything like that. Don't you it, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> My thing was, what's the, <laughs> if, 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 if not this, then what? Like, what is the alternative that is going to revitalize a once thriving area that is now dilapidated, has rampant homelessness, has crime that's through the roof compared to years Lights, past? Weed yep. for sale. Yep. Every, yeah. Like, it, yeah. it's become like a forgotten area. Basically, y'all acting like y'all not from Philly. Yeah, <laughs> right, right, right. that's Philadelphia. I don't have an alternative. <laughs> so, so, like, like, but also to your point, Chad, we got to think like, why is Philly such a big market, historic city? And we have no industry here. Like, like real rap. Like, Amazon, yeah. we went to talk to Amazon, and I think, you know, I think JB and those folk, you know what I mean? Like, probably was like, nah, not Philly. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, no tech, no thriving, nothing. Yep. So it's like, for us to miss out, and I don't think people do big picture economics, but again, when this thing is saturated, saturated, with, with for the majority of Philadelphians, the yeah. black community, you know, black-led development, you know, black ownership, black skill union trades, Black jobs, and again, it, it benefits a ton of people, though, but schools, everything benefits a lot of people. You know what I mean? The tax, economic benefits. Yeah. But also, we got to think, you know, as a minority, where that is beginning to decline, the fear for us as African Americans is like, yo, how do we actually stay in Philadelphia? Like, and I, and I really need to hit this home, though, but like, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of these programs, whether they're politically led or even some of these, you know, organizations that call themselves doing something good, um, and I know their intentions are right, but we're literally leading, you know, poverty led, poverty driven programs to where it's like, hey, we got you a job for thirteen dollars an hour. Like, like we're right. not pushing you to entrepreneurship. We're not pushing you to having get into the skilled union trades and everything else. But we're pushing you a thirteen dollars hour job, and we're doing a victory lap that we're getting people employed. Like that's not enough. So this thing really has vision and foresight. Because for me, I'm thinking about how do we continue to sustain and survive and actually thrive in this city yeah. long term. Yep. And again, to see certain elements of it, and we got to get DG on here, like, 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 in another episode. So Absolutely. Like because, like, he's like the, the man, the detail guy. So he'll break it down, break it down. You know what I mean? So any yeah. other questions that come from it, like, man, DG got it. But, yeah. but I'm saying, I actually thought know, DG was gonna get, like, <laughs> I thought he was gonna be on this yeah. episode. Yeah. <laughs> but no, we got, we got to definitely bring him in because he's gonna get to the nitty gritties. But. The thing is, it's like there are mechanisms in place to ensure that this happens. So these aren't just fictitious numbers that's being thrown out there. Right. Like there are safeguards, mechanisms, and systems put in place to ensure that the transfer, you know, the transition is, is, is hot and is ready. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So when the ground's breaking, everything else. Like, again, I do my research. So right. for me to see this, again, I'm like, yo, never in any of my dealings with all kinds of people, government, private sector, uh, corporate sector, nobody has been this intentional. So I'm like, why are we playing games here? Right. Which is why I've been that visible. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. On, on, on the outside looking in, I hear 40% minority representation in terms of like vendors. I think immediately that goes to ownership. Like these people have businesses that they already either are running that they're going to put in this new arena and or they're establishing a new business or whatever. Mm-hmm. And that to me, that's a huge number. That jumps off the page. Yeah, and I, I think what's important to note, you know, not every business that exists today is ready for to do business at, at that, that level. Scale. Exactly. And so one of the things that, you know, as someone who's been a developer in the city a long time, and, you know, this isn't the first time, and I, I think, and I want to say this, it's not because a lot of white developers didn't want to do the right thing, okay? But it's because a lot of businesses weren't prepared 
for the scale of large scale construction projects, right? And so the question is, how can we now as the Sixers and 76th place help prepare business for f when construction starts three, four, five years, you know, f down the road? And so, you know, DG and I, you know, we, we made a commitment, a $2 million commitment to the African American Chamber to say like, let's prepare these businesses today for five years from now. So that they can hit now. the ground right. running. Right. Because when like, you know, one now. of those <laughs> things is like, you could be a, a small contractor and you're very good, but like you can't afford to fund payroll for 90 days, mm -hmm. right? Which is the normal payroll process mm -hmm. yeah. on a big, large scale billion dollar job. Right. So can we help create some sort of financing mechanism to help those folks, right? Number two is between now and then, can we organize something? And DG was instrumental in this. Um, I'm going to be his agent, and we would keep talking yeah, about yeah, DG. Yeah. 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 DG something. Bookings is going oh, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's, but like <laughs> we created, you, you heard him mention me a couple times. <laughs> yeah, we, we well, at least I counted 14. Yeah. We, we, we created something called Everyone Builds, and the goal was if you look at construction projects, large scale construction projects, um, and, and say, hey. What, what's happened in the past is you would have black owned contractors and businesses ramp up for a big project. Mm -hmm. They finish that project and they keep that big crew hoping the next big job comes and then they get overextended and like maybe they've held on too long, something happens. Yeah. If we can aggregate over the next 10 years and say, you got a billion and a half dollar arena, you got what Penn's doing, Jefferson's doing, Temple's doing, all private sector's doing, and we all get in a room and we get a whiteboard and we say, here's the big construction projects over the next 10 years that need to be staffed holy shit, we can organize everybody. So we've mm. created an apparatus now to organize the community, organize the unions, organize everyone so that we can ramp up. Right. And then you say, okay, it's not just the Sixers billion and a half dollar arena, but there's $10 billion of educational projects, all the other stuff. Well, you know what? What jobs need to be in those buildings? Nursing, life sciences, security, could be custodian, you name it. Let's prepare those jobs too. Okay, and then you, you work a partnership with the school district of Philadelphia, right? So people who finish high school and say, how do we train them for the next batch of jobs? Whether it's with labor, whether it's with- It was like unionizing the unions almost. Right? Yeah. How do we organize everyone? How do we prepare people for larger scale opportunities? Mm. And I think that that's also like, you know, our, our friendship, uh, brotherhood, and just our workings together um, isn't just also comprising me, but also bringing other organizations, you know what I mean, to the table. Um, like TRP. Can, yeah, like everything, <laughs> man, so that we can create a pipeline. So that, it, yep. you know, so here's the table. So, so here's the table. So, 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 look, so that the handoff is made. You know what I'm saying? When they, you know, DA hits me or, or whoever and say, like, yo, we got 200 slots here. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, what organizations are working with what? How do we get them risk? ready? Yeah, how do we get them here? You see right. what I'm saying? So that, right. again, everybody has to understand how intentional and how. You know how how sophisticated things really are, and like you you hearing this man, and like he's giving his game on on like so much. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And this and this and that. You know what I mean? So like with that though, people gotta understand that this ain't somebody that's just talking out us behind. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. Like again, so I, I think that that's one of that's been one of the narratives that has really annoyed the hell out of me. It really has. Like and you know a lot of people say stuff on Twitter they won't say to me in person. Right. But, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, for various reasons, but 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 you know the whole. These people are paid off. This is that. You know what I mean? All kinds of nonsense. Like, this right here is legacy. Yes. You feel me? This is legacy. When I'm watching just the black community been being downtrodden for so long in this city, being ignored for so long, not having equity, um, always coming in last in matters pertaining to everything from entrepreneurship, ownership, all kinds of stuff. And again, like, you know, greater than any grant support or whatever for me is being able to say, like, look, man, when it's said and done, I was able to say, yo, I was a part of something historic that really brought about thousands of jobs that opened up the door for people. Cause mm -hmm. I, listen, I'm saying right now, I'm not about to create a food and beverage business tomorrow. So like, I'm not about to say DA, yo, put my uh, chicken and waffles. Yeah. In there. Like, <laughs> I ain't got time for that. You feel what I'm saying? Carl's chicken and waffles sound good yeah. though. It, 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 it do, yeah. you know what I mean? But I ain't got time for it. But so, pass this crunchy chicken. <laughs> I mean, by the way, I, I'm down for some chicken and waffles so, uh, after the vodka. Um, but, like, here's yeah, what I see. Sure, you you talk about legacy. Like, you know, and, and I, I talked to Carl about this. You know, like, look, people come after me all the time. Oh, like, you know, he, he's, you know, I'm rich, so I, I, I must have an angle here. Yeah. Like, you know, I, truth be told, like I've said to him, everyone who knows me knows the truth. Like, why am I signing up to get my head kicked in for the next seven years to get this done? Right. Okay. Right. Like, I'm getting, Is that how long it's going to take? Well, to by between our lease, we have a lease. We're going to honor our lease where we are. Mm -hmm. Let me just give a quick commercial. Like, I have a lease, a lease of the building. Mm -hmm. My lease is going to be up, and I'd like to own my own building. Okay. No differently than my tenants who rent apartments for exactly. me someday want to own their own home. 
I'm the only team, we are the only team in the state of Pennsylvania that doesn't own their own home, mm. okay? Mm. And so, like, I'm not looking to be held hostage yeah. in my, you know, by my current landlord. Why, I'm just why, looking. Real quick, why do you think that the Sixers didn't find it prudent to own their own home before? Well, because remember, the history of the Sixers, we were owned by Comcast. Comcast yeah, owns the Flyers, and, and Comcast owns people. the Wells Fargo Center. Right. When they sold us the team, we signed a 20-year lease. We're going to honor that lease to the last day. Um, but I have every right, and we have every right, to go find our own home. Yeah. But, you know, the point I'm trying to make here is that for myself, Josh, and David, like, you know, this is legacy. You know, I'm a Philadelphian. Like, you know, I've taken my kids, I have two daughters, down to show them the mall, show them the area. I've walked around there trying to, I want them to understand what I'm spending all my time on, mm -hmm. what, what, what I'm passionate about. And, like, I've taken them down during the day, and I've taken them down in the dead of night, okay? Ooh. When it's, like, dark and dreary, mm -hmm. and, like, you know, like, they're like, whoa. Okay, yeah. and like, and I'm like, girls, you're two blocks from City Hall, the center of the city, yeah. and it's dead. Okay, so for me, this is my legacy of doing something great for Philadelphia, creating nine thousand construction jobs, a thousand permanent jobs, and trying to like, hopefully, lead by example to get other people like me to take a risk with their capital. Can I ask when the lease is up? Yeah. When is it? In 2031. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's why I'm starting now. Right. Started seven, eight year. We started a year ago, eight years early. Giving everyone notice, giving my landlord notice, mm -hmm. plenty of notice. They knew yeah. we're not living right, you know. Hey, right? I'm out of here. Landlord, right. landlord, right. landlord is like a big a man. Right? Yeah. 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 Give them plenty of notice. Um, and, like you know, uh, in seven years, yeah. I'm out of yeah. here. We're, we're just looking to have our own home. That's it. Yeah, I'd also hmm. say too, man. To that point, like you know, and and this this is one of the things that that bothers me. You know, um, he's talking 2031, 2031. So like, we got to step out of the realm of stupidity where we start talking about things like. Oh man, nobody trying to get on the sub, man. Sub is unsafe. Twenty thirty one. Trust me, the sub's gonna be very safe. Super safe. Right. Super safe. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Beyond safe. The, 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 the Tokyo way, bullet train yeah, safe. The way, the way the is trending, you know, all, all of the riff is gonna be out. You know what I mean? So, 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 with that being said, what also bothers uh, me is that we're not considering, yo. Like people are talking about ah oh, part time jobs and everything else. You know how many brothers that I got now hit me up for the most simplistic things, Ubers, uh, cell phone bill money and all that. I don't know yeah. who they think I am. You know what I'm saying? They must think I'm DA. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, yo. But anyway, I do it because I understand the risk that they take. Otherwise, if they can't keep a phone on. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, like, with that being said, what does that look like? You know, if I'm in a position where I say, no, you know, I got something better for you. Let me reach out to my guys and make sure you get a job. Absolutely. Without all the red tape, everything else. And it's like, referral for me should be like gold, where it's like, hey, man, one of the past girl guys, is, you know, needs a job. Like, yep. let's put them on. You see what I'm saying? So so people try to downplay jobs as if it, it doesn't mean anything yeah. until somebody snatch in their car, until somebody pulls them out of their car or get right. them at the gas station. Yeah. So, 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 but also 2031, while everybody's talking about public safety issues and they pretend to care because they're watching, you know, everybody sensationalize the violence, how are you thinking about a kid's future who's 13, who's going to be 21 by 2031? Yeah. Who's like, yo, this is really my city. Mm -hmm. You know, I could use that union job. I could yeah, use, sure. you know what I mean? A lot totally of those agree. other opportunities by 2031. So if we're talking about protecting and preserving and saving our children and, and, and making sure that we're future proof and, uh, and preventing poverty from our youth. Who the hell are you to sit there and say like, yeah, yeah, I, I don't really care about all of that. You know what I mean? Like, cause yeah. this really doesn't affect you or impact you long term. So, yeah. Like everything that he's saying is just on point. And it's just like, it's, it's a joke to me when I see people who don't and lay, the lay sad reality is this: Philadelphia has all the makings of a great city. You got, you got major transportation um, systems as far as like SEPTA, the sub, the elevated trains, all of the buses, and everything like that. So you have a major uh, public transportation system. You have ports. You have you know you're on I ninety five corridor. You Ed, have, Eds, meds. We have the best hospital, children's hospital, best children's hospital in the world. In the world, University yeah. of Pennsylvania Hospital, health system, top ten in the world. Okay, we have the best universities, right? Look how many colleges we have in Philly, mm -hmm. right? You, our food scene is great, amazing, right? Our museums, our culture, all that. This is a great, great city, right? And like we have to believe, and it starts with taking a risk. It starts with investing in it, and it starts with people feeling like if you think about, it, we had great mojo before COVID. Okay, people were downtown, people were moving downtown, older people were selling houses moving downtown, you had young people in town. The vibe was great. We gotta get that back. We gotta give yeah. people the confidence. And there was a huge development right at uh, 12th and Market, you know, adjacent yep. to the Lowe's or whatever. Yep. And essentially, like, let's be honest, it failed. Like, it, it didn't, like, COVID pretty much eradicated it. They had to move the Wawa out of there. Wawa left. They had the pub license. They were supposed to basically start doing, like, a pub initiative there and everything like that. They they, they cut that at, they cut bait and got out of there. Um, that Iron Hill Brewery's yep. not through, and the Hard Rock Cafe's not, not, not thriving.
driving. And it's just one of them things where it's like, it's very admirable to see one of our sports franchises take the initiative to really invest in the city, create all of this opportunity, and there's still a huge amount of pushback. I used, I used to question it, because I used to drive the bus, and I used to come up and down Market yep. Street. I used to drive the 33 and the 48. And I always would question like what it is. Like The second you wrap around City Hall and hit Market East, yeah. Like, it's almost happened? like this force field comes in and it's just... <laughs> but but <laughs> just think back, what happened? A hundred years ago, Market East was the center of I commerce. Like you remember like 11, Straw You had 11 department stores yeah. on Market Street. I mean, Wanamaker's okay. and Macy's and... Well, there's one left right now, and that's leaving in two years. Mm. How do well, we Macy's go... Macy's again? Right? Macy's leaving. Hey. Okay. And so how does that happen? And so for me, that's when I walked by there. And I... Listen, I spent a year trying to say, what is the best place to build the best arena in the country? Mm. Okay. And I'm telling you, we found it. Yeah. Okay. We found it because it's going to bring life back to downtown. It's going to help small businesses. Like that is going to pump the economy. We need it. Yeah. No. Nah, we need it for sure. I'm on board, man. See, I ain't making chicken and waffles, but I may get me some kind of storefront. Kind of store down there. All I could think about was General's <laughs> Fried Chicken from a. <laughs> from a <laughs> Seriously, man. Seriously. Uh, I want to switch gears a little bit. Yeah, I, 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 I want to talk because DG mentioned it outside. He's like, how are we feeling about the season? I want to talk about the, uh, the changes that the Sixers <laughs> have gone on this year. Um, y'all got rid of Glenn. You got Nick Nurse in there now. Um, you guys are all going to love Nick. Nick is a we great, love Nick. I like Nick guy. Nurse. I think I like Nick Nurse is a really. I used to say I thought he was a really good coach in Toronto. I like Nick Nurse a lot. The um, we got who who y'all get now? Uh, Kelly Oubre Jr. Kelly Oubre is, yep. is, is, is good pick is, up, right? James is maybe aloof. you know <laughs> he's a maybe maybe that's a good late late late. late <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to comment on James. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good late late field of addition though, Kelly Oubre. Just yeah. uh, team made a decent playoff run, fell just a little bit short, went seven games with the Celtics. Um, what's been the most exciting part? of being a governor for this organization for the last year? Well, we don't say owner anymore. Well, it's governor. They call it managing partner or owner <laughs> or partner or whatever you want to say. You know, I mean, I think, look, um, I think the fun part about, you know, being involved with the team is when you ride that wave of passion, right? Like when you're winning and you're just walking around high fiving the guy next to you, you don't know who they are. <laughs> like, especially when we were in Boston and grabbed those games and all I'm looking around is, are there any Sixer fans here? And I'm just finding a high five. Like that to me is sports brings people together, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't matter what kind of day somebody had or whatever. You all bond. It doesn't matter where you're from, who you are, but we all, you can bond about something common like that. And to me, that is like the best part about sports. Absolutely. It's good. Hold on. Yeah, you say Glenn. I was like, who's Glenn? Doc, yeah. Yeah, my, my dad I'm refuses like, to call I'm him Doc. Doc. Yeah. It's only one Doc in Philadelphia. Yeah. Dr. Well, Jack. That's, that's fair. Yeah. Pop, pop. That's, fair. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, yeah. For that he one. will not call that. Is, that is Glenn. I love <laughs> that. Glenn River. I love that. That sounded like real yeah. person. Yeah. I'm like, Glenn. I'm like, yeah. oh, man. Yeah. You know, my dad has a picture of Dr. J up on the mantle with us. And I'd be like, yo, Dr. J isn't in this family. <laughs> I love that. Like, that's his man. Dave, what is the future of the Sixers organization in the areas of basketball, business, and community involvement? Well, you know, so let's take community first. I think, you know, when you think about what our group has done, and we're just getting started, but, you know, and DG can talk more about this, but, like, you know, you know kind of you know, during COVID, we came out with a $20 million initiative mm -hmm. uh, to help, you know, fund small business, to help, you know, communities in trouble like that 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 for us is like we are a part of the community how do we make sure we do that you know tad brown the ceo and i just went to an elementary school uh, last week and we normally do a uh you know they were like hey we're, we're giving out some five below gift cards and two teachers won five hundred dollar gift cards to buy supplies for their thing for their classrooms you know awesome. and my wife was a teacher but like i'm standing there saying and i looked in the audience and it was just spur of the moment but i'm like whoa whoa whoa, whoa. How many other teachers? I grabbed the mic, okay, and I said, how many other teachers are there? And they said, 35. I mm -hmm. said, I'm buying all you $250 gift cards. Like, they have the same needs, but yeah. like, you know, and I think that goes to the culture of what the Sixers care about for the city. They care about our fans, like, and, and we want this to be the community's asset. And so, you know, the future well, well, is, well, yeah. Yeah, not to cut you off on that, but I just want to also highlight that, to where you are, because some people may listen and be like, oh, $250, why are they giving that to the teachers? 
People don't understand how many teachers put Amazon wish lists together before yep, the school year. That's right. Uh, you're, you're talking to somebody yeah, whose mother yeah, was a teacher. Yeah, I see, watched my mom spend mad money at trying to set their the, the store. Used to be that. called Becker's. I've watched my mom going yeah. Becker's and spend hundreds, if not thousands of dollars yeah. to get everything for the because they don't yep, fund it. They, they don't fund it. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. My, my wife was a teacher. My yeah. daughter, my oldest daughter's graduating college. She's going to be a teacher mm-hmm. next year. Like you know. We got to get our teachers right. You know, right. we got to do something for our education. So, you know, for there. So, while, what I wound up doing is we wound up having programs at three other schools. And I said, well, I didn't go to all three, but I said, how many teachers were at all three schools? So yeah. I said, I'm buying them all gift cards. Mm-hmm. Okay, and, and, and like that's a, a small thing, but like I, we just want to make a difference to, for the community. So you asked me, community. You said as a business and think, basketball. Yeah. So I think as a business, I think if you came to our offices, you'd see that we have a great staff. We have people who care. They wear the badge and they wear the logo with pride. They love the organization. We have a great culture. Um, and, and I think like that goes a long way. And then obviously, like, we want to win championships, man. Yeah. Like, like, like <laughs> there's not one of us who doesn't get up every day saying, what do we need to win a championship, right? And, like, you know, even Daryl getting Ubre, like, that is a great pickup He's to find a vet like that game. this late in the game when he had other, like, so, like, he chose Philly, right? Like, he had other offers, and, like, Daryl figured that out. I know people like to give Daryl shit, but Daryl is really good at his job, and he understands how to find that hidden gem Mm -hmm. right and to me like those hidden gems you have your superstars on one end but basketball is a barbell business Mm -hmm. right you have your superstars but then you need like your role players and all that and uh, I I think we you know we have some of the best talent in the league when it comes to evaluating talent yeah I think also with that being said like there's not enough taking into consideration that you know the the evolution of Tyrese Maxey um, would not be and then with a lot of those key players because right. cause I think you got teams like the glue Celtics. Guys. Yeah, the glue guys. I think you got you got teams like the Celtics and other teams where the synergy's not right or you're star heavy and everything else. And it's like that doesn't materialize in the playoffs when you need everybody to step up. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. The Nuggets did. And the Nuggets was like, you know what I mean? You had the uh, – what was the guy? Brown. Uh, yeah, Bruce Brown. Bruce Brown. Yeah. All these other people stepping up, filling in those roles. Yeah, and, championships and, are yeah. one in the glue. Like yeah. that's just reality. Yeah. Like your star players are your star players, but that's you got to have a team that runs to. eight, nine, right? eight. Yeah. So yeah, it's the only way that. you make you get yeah. it through, you know, all those games. So I think that that move is a big move. Uh, something I want to ask is: we always say on the show, there's a few different Philadelphias. We've kind of talked on this. There's Black Philly and White Philly yeah. being the most prominent. Dave, is there any cultural clarity that Carl has been able to and DG have been able to provide for you um, as a result of your day to day interaction and and bond that you have with these guys? You know, I, I think, you know, what both of them have, DG starting, but, you know, Carl as well. I think, you know, one, I think that, crea- you know, there's not a, what, what I find is, you know, even in kind of like what we're doing with the chamber, with the African-American chamber, you have all these businesses that are like, I, I, they're like, you know, I, they're at the starting gate and they're like ready to go, right? Like, like mm-hmm. they've worked hard, they've pulled themselves up to get to this place. And like, it's just that business, like my success, like, I don't care how successful you are. I've had a lot of luck in life. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I think you prepare yourself to make some luck happen. But like, I'm telling you, like, I, like anyone who doesn't admit who's where I am, that they haven't had luck is full of shit. Okay. <laughs> like they just are, they're drinking their own bullshit. And, and so like, but like, and, and so like the goal is, can I help? And can we help you know, kind of like push that little, you know, move the chips around a little bit so that luck gets created because the hard work was already there, mm-hmm. okay? And so I think what these guys have really shown me is the folks that are so rare in the go, okay? And they just need that little, like, that little bit. Yeah. And, like, I know that this project and us can be that little bit, you know? Um, and so you push her over there, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's he's got to keep up. No, nah, it's um, really good. I'm, I'm done. It's, it's, um, it, and it works. We got to do one. Of, we got to do. One, we we got to do one of these on a Friday afternoon so we yeah. can start Mary, really drinking. Harvest enough. vodka works. Um, so I think for me, you know, what they have said is like, hey, like, like everyone here that we're talking about in the community that wants to be involved with us is ready to put the hard work in, yes. right? Because like, look, we're. I, I only know one. I, I only operate at one speed. So like. For me, like someone else has to be willing to work too. And so like they, they've opened the door to say like, you know, how can we go into the community and give them the opportunity they deserve? Okay, how can we, you know, spread the opportunities out to help lift the city? How can this get folks motivated so that the next 
project, the next billion dollar project behind us says there is an active and able and willing group of people and workforce and communities that want to come out and get something done. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think like, that's what it's opened my eyes up to. Yeah. Okay. And I think for me, you know, understanding that like the lack of opportunity wasn't the lack of willingness to work. It was that in between, like we talked about, like, how do you get a business ready to do business with a big construction project? They need that interim financing, right? How do we create that middle piece? And then I have no doubt that these businesses are going to really mm -hmm. take off. Right. And so I think like now that I see the problem much more clearly, I could put some of my experience in acumen to help fix it. I'm not going to solve <laughs> all of our community's exactly. problems. Yeah, yeah. But like, you know what? Like for me, like let's just get some wins and some points on the board. Yeah. And I think that creates like success begets success. I always say that. Indeed. Uh, I think this is going to be our final question. Any detractors who feel like the arena isn't good for the city? Uh, we already talked about the displacement. So that's, that's out of it. Uh, creates unnecessary traffic. And the complaints just kind of go on and on and on. What do you say to those people to quell those concerns and let them know that this is not only good for the city, city but beneficial on a macro scale? I, I think, look, first term, like, am I saying there won't be any traffic? No. Okay? There's traffic now. But there's traffic <laughs> at the games now. There's tra but, like, do I think that, you know, the fact that it's after work hours on a reverse commute and – you know, almost 50% of our season ticket holders come from Philadelphia now going to Wells Fargo Center and can walk and, you know, all that. Like, yeah. like, like do I think it's worth it? Yes. And so I'm like, like, I think people in I know it would definitely increase ridership for sure when it comes well, to, like, your trains and everything else. Uh, listen, you know, like, I am definitely, like, I listen, I tested it out before I did it. Like, I took the regional <laughs> rail 10 times just to make sure getting off at Market East at Jefferson <laughs> Station to say, like, how real is this, okay? Mm -hmm. Right? And it's 19 minutes from my house, mm -hmm. okay, yeah. instead of an hour when I drive down, okay? Like, right. that's real. Um, and, and so, one, I think, you know, I, I give everyone an example. And I'm older than all you guys, but, like, I used to have a BlackBerry, okay? I, I love my BlackBerry. Too, we man. all had, all right. Yeah, I love and my BlackBerry. I, we, 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 I ain't want to give it up. Like, we, <laughs> so, so We're I, up there. I, we're I, up there. So, so I, lo I love the BlackBerry. All that chest, right? full head of hair for <laughs> <All right>. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and so, but I give the best example. Like, when that iPhone came, I was like, I don't want that fucking thing. I mean, yeah. I love my BlackBerry, yeah. right? Okay? I did the same thing. People have been going to South Philly for sports for 50 years. That's all they know. That's all they know. Okay? Now I love my iPhone. Yeah. And so, like, all I'm saying is, like... You know, once I'm telling you, once you try this, you know, you ain't going back, <laughs> right. right? Like you will realize the vibrancy and energy of going after work, having dinner, going to the game is going to provide you. Oh, and by I mean, the way, yeah. related to traffic, you know, right now you leave Wells Fargo, there's only four exits. Yes. Right? Okay. Yes. You're going to leave here. Some people are going to walk. Some people are going to go down to the train. Some people walk to one of the 29 parking garages that yeah. we have deals with. Like it's a whole different yeah, when, we, when we go to Sixers games now, we got to go up to the Cadillac, hold it down with Mara for an hour, right. just waiting for <laughs> the traffic. Post, yeah. yeah. post game. Just waiting for the traffic That's to it. die yeah. down. Yeah. So I, I'd also say that, you know, a lot of people from an environmental friendly perspective, you know, that talks about less congestion, you know, cleaner air, everything else, like people are able to commute traffic wise, you know what I mean, straight through transit. Not to mention, you save a ton of money. You see what I'm saying? Like, even if you don't want to be the person that parks in a lot, you can sit there and say, yo, I'm going to just hop the L, hop the sub. And it's, and, it's, and it's actually more accessible for everybody. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, you know how many, you know, uh, black and brown people I've heard that's like, you know, I really don't be wanting to go all the way down near to the stadium. Yeah. You know. Um, well, it's a pain in the ass. You got to switch lines to get sure. down there, you know. For sure. For sure. And it's like, you know. You got to know the way to get into the, into the uh, yard down there. That's <laughs> you know, how you yeah. under the yeah. traffic. And, and, and also, historically, like, we, we want to talk just about, you know, how does it benefit everybody? That has an always been a friendly place for black and brown people to go down anyway you know what I'm saying? hey so, man so so you know expanding live ain't necessarily burr, burr, burr. <laughs> so, so so again it's like it's inviting everybody from everywhere yeah. to get here you know what i'm saying and i think that people need to respect that and to those detractors again like i say this you know you can be as anti whatever you want and continue to talk bad or down on a thing um to me any of those people have a responsibility to answer what are you going to do to create the same right. magnitude and level of black opportunity in this city? Right. And the reason why I say black, again, because in any major city, they always worry or tend to pay attention to what the majority of a city is. Absolutely. So, so, so yep. that has to be, we have to be in that conversation. So if people don't have anything to replace that, any 
bright idea because all of a yep. sudden now everybody's a, a, a pin grad researcher yeah. and, and understands economics. City planner. City planner. City planner. Yeah. City developers. Yeah. They understand sports economics. You know what I mean? Everybody has this one-on-one for yeah. these things. So, yeah. so like, what are you doing? Uh, my uncle was an architect. Yeah. Right. So, so what are you doing yeah. to replace that? Because, again, um, you're, you're, you're pretty much taking a crap on everybody who's fighting for advancement in this city. So you got to have something. If you're a detractor, if you're a naysayer, what do you have in store? You right. know, do you have a, a billion and a half of your own to come on and, 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 and set up shop and to do something different and to bring about yeah. these opportunities? Because otherwise, people are just talking. Yeah. yeah no, Absolutely. Um, I, I lied. This is my last thing. I, there's a there's a 50 million number that me yes. and Carl were, were talking about. Uh, explain the number yep. and where it goes Got and it. who's benefiting glad, from You know that, what? I'm from, glad you brought it up because, you know, DG's going to give me shit for not remembering. That's, <laughs> that's one of my key I talking you, points. Um, <laughs> you know, so, you know, one of the things that's important when you're doing a large scale development in the city is a community benefits agreement. Yes. What will that project provide to the community? And the community is a broad based term. We have offered $50 million is the part of the community benefits agreement, which is the largest number in the history of Philadelphia. Mm for any developer to do, okay? And it's one of the largest in the country for a, de- a, a sports team owner to do in a sports entertainment complex, okay? Um, you know, ch- just to give you an example, you know, when Live Casino was done down there, they gave a million dollars. And that's, I'm not, dis- I'm not throwing shade. That yeah. was a big number for them. But, yeah. but we said we want to do something unprecedented in the city of Philadelphia, okay? And so that $50 million, it's not all up front. Right, right, right. It's right. over 30 years. Yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. We're going to break um, it down. Yeah, we're going to break it down. down. Little payment plan. Little payment plan. <laughs> yeah, we all, we all need financing. Um, <laughs> but that $50 million is meant to do lots of things, okay? Yes. Uh, you know, and so I'll start, you know, it could be things related to Reading Terminal, right? How do we make sure that mm-hmm. small businesses there succeed during the influx of, you know, events going on? Mm-hmm. How do we make sure that Chinatown, businesses there, public safety, security, cleanliness, right? To make sure it's clean after games, people feel safe, cameras, lighting, things like that, okay? Affordable housing. What can we do for the city of Philadelphia to help some affordable housing, both in adjacent communities and in other communities, okay? How do we make sure job training programs, okay, to prepare people, all right? And so there's a host of things that we wanna do that we want this project to not just be a win for us, and, you know, like one of the things that drives me nuts is people, you know, you guys are only doing this because it's good for the Sixers. Well, listen, I never said it wasn't good for the Sixers, right. but that doesn't mean <laughs> it can't be good for the city and for everyone else. I'm mm-hmm. the one committing a billion dollars plus for this project. Okay. But like, why can't everyone win? Yeah. A lot okay. of people are very black and white. Like if this side is winning. Then somebody, somebody's got to lose. And it's like, no, and sometimes agreements are mutually beneficial. And that's what we want. So that's the goal right now. So. Washington West, Midtown Village, all the businesses there. How do we make sure the adjacent communities in the greater Philadelphia area benefit? Yeah. That's the goal. That's awesome, man. DA, we absolutely appreciate you so much. Thank you for being here today. Pastor Carl, thank you for putting this together, uh, for being present and always, you know, willing to... Uh, about that Pastor's yeah. fried chicken thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, always being willing to, uh, you know, impart your knowledge and, and your perspective on these different situations and, you know, being on the front line for not just yourself, but the greater good of uh you know everyone in the city regardless of you know race background or ethnicity that's uh one thing i just want to take a moment to thank you because you you always look out for trp and that, that, oh that's, my gosh man. no like because you you know you've been on here more times than anybody you, you know you you lead pass, the league in yeah, appearances you, yeah. well, y'all smart for that yeah, <laughs> you, you pass mitch you pass Ra, you pay you know what i'm saying so it's like yeah no you always always there for us and that that's dope like, well, I appreciate well I, that. honestly though y'all like you know me and da talk man we we talk often man Probably like, I don't know, we text probably every, every day. day. Yeah. Yeah, every <laughs> day. Usually, usually at night, too. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. You know, I'm like, so like people's perspective of people that like have money and stuff like that, I can't speak for majority of them. I don't, I don't know a lot of people with that type of money. But I mean, like, yeah, my man is, is super, you know, accessible to me. And just every time he say it, like, I'm telling you, like what he says, he stands on. So yeah, like, yeah you need me for something, let me know. Yo, wherever you need me to go, I'm going. Yeah. And, and you know, I was like, yo, First thing I thought about, because, I mean, we're talking about listening sessions, doing a lot of different things. I'm bringing them to the block and all of that. But, like, beyond that, I was like, there's no greater platform to get the word out to black right. Philadelphians and beyond than my man and them podcasts. Like, this is this has to be the platform. Because yeah. I watch y'all bring thousands of people together during y'all signing situation. Yeah, y'all yeah. pack the venue out. Like, people love y'all. And mm-hmm. I'm just like, you know, this this has to be the platform that, that we elevate, you know, what's entailed. You know what I'm Absolutely. saying? Absolutely. And, and yeah. hear from the man himself. 
and then we'll hear from the man behind the scenes with the, all the language, you know what I'm saying, that can break everything down to yeah, a yeah, science. Yeah. When, when everybody gets to talk, I'm <laughs> like, well, I don't really believe that. Man, DG going to come in and tear it apart. So, yeah. so like, that's what he do. <laughs> right. But, but, yeah, so I, it was nobody better than y'all two. Yeah. Yeah. Really nah, we absolutely it. appreciate no, that. Um, you know, the, 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 the message, I think, is, is clearer today yeah. um you know going forward um i think that you know we reach a specific demographic of smart intelligent um you know uh <laughs> you know entrepreneurial and uh, professional uh you know people of a certain age uh that this directly impacts it, ben it benefits them uh it'll benefit you know people that look like them and everything like that and i think that um it it's a solid uh you know conversation that'll be impactful to everybody that receives it so no, this is this is great man we yeah, appreciate your no, time today absolutely thank you Awesome. Yeah, right uh, the Rose Podcast Ever. We signing out here on the Revolt Podcast Network. Get some of this too, man. Got to it. No, listen, it works. I finished it. And I'm not even like a vodka American guy. Harvest. It works. <laughs> it works. Shout out to Ryan. Shout out to V. Everybody here at uh, Frame Philly, 222 Market Street. Make sure y'all make your reservations and let them know that, you know, y'all saw the beautiful uh, restaurant here on TRP, man. And uh, they're one of the businesses that's definitely going to, you know, benefit from this new arena that we that right we planning street. on putting up right up the street um, in, 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 20, in 2031, 2031, right? 2031. 2031, we're going to be up and rolling. So uh, this is one of the many businesses that, you know, is going to benefit from it um other than that man we out of here here we out Peace. a new sixers arena in the heart of market east is in the works you can visit 76place.com to learn more about the project get updates on progress and sign the pledge to support the arena proposal you can also follow on all social media platforms at 76place